Welcome to The Real News. I'm Mark Steiner, here on The Mark Steiner Show at The Real News. It's good to have you all with us. We've all been aware of the Israeli attack on Janine that killed at least 12 Palestinians, five of them children, thousands displaced from their homes, over 100 homes destroyed. And this in the wake of demonstrations in Israel decrying the end of democracy in Israel itself, but demonstrations that hardly mentioned or included Palestinians. And all this in the face of the most right-wing religious fundamentalist government in Israel's history. The threat to wipe out Palestinian towns and people have come from the highest positions in the Israeli government. Before the assault on Janine, Israel human rights group Betzalem called it a regime of Jewish supremacy in all the areas under their control. Two weeks before the invasion, Israel's national security minister, Itamar Ben-Gavir, was quoted in the New York Times as saying, We have to settle the land of Israel and at the same time need to launch a military campaign, blow up buildings, assassinate terrorists, not one or two, but dozens, hundreds, or if needed, thousands. And all this coming on the heels of the devastation of Janine for the second time in 20 years. And we are joined today by Maron Rappaport of 972 Local Call, who is a longtime Israeli journalist, former head of the news department of al and political activists. And Yumna Patel, who is also a political activist, living in Bethlehem, the Palestine news director of Mondo Weiss, who has been a freelance journalist for a long time, uh, based in Bethlehem and written articles for numerous organizations. And Maron and Yaman, welcome, good to have you both with us. So what I want to kind of tackle first is why this happened now. Why this attack on Janine? What's the political motivation behind it? And what's the reality beyond the headlines that we see? So the latest attack in Janine is sort of the, the culmination of over a year's long military effort by the, by the Israeli a security apparatus to quash growing Palestinian armed resistance groups in the occupied West Bank, primarily in the Nablus and Janine areas. And in Janine, the huge focus has been on the Janine refugee camp. So over the past uh, year and a half, I mean, since the beginning of 2022, we've seen several large scale Israeli army raids on the Janine refugee camp, uh, many of which have been very deadly. I mean, most raids over the past year or so have a minimum of around five people killed in in a single raid. And so what we saw last week was the culmination of the Israeli army's efforts to quash Palestinian resistance. And as you mentioned, it ended up with at least 12 Palestinians being killed, several of them children. And it was the largest raid that we saw on Janine and, and one of the largest military operations in general in the West Bank since the Second Intifada. And so the bigger picture is that right now, currently and particularly in the past year, we've been seeing this, this moment in, in the Palestinian streets where Palestinians, particularly Palestinian youth and young men, are feeling increasingly frustrated and disillusioned, not only with their own governments, but also with the the Israeli occupation that every day is further entrenching an apartheid reality on the ground, but is also, as we know, getting increasingly right wing. And so many of the youth, particularly in Janine, have been put in a position where they feel like the only left, the only option left for them is to take up arms and to to resist against Israeli Israeli occupation. And so the the battle that we're currently seeing in Janine um, has many sort of different different parts. And it's also related to the the Israeli what's happening in Israeli politics right now. But I'm sure that Maron will will probably give us a um, a better answer on that. Maron, go ahead, please. Yes, um, of course, uh, how Israel uh, portrays it is that uh, uh, Janine, the northern uh, of the West Bank, uh, Janine and Nablus, but uh, especially Janine, uh, has become uh, a place where uh, military attacks on Israeli either army or settlers in the West Bank uh, has been has been uh, on the rise in the last um, in the last year, and Janine uh, has been portrayed as the center of that uh, uh, violence. Uh, but uh, I think that um, these explanations are very partial. I think the main reason 
for the the attack on Janine uh, was really political. Uh, the um, Israeli, as as uh, as we know, uh, um, as you mentioned also, Israel is now governed by the most extreme uh, right wing government in its history, and it has a long history of extreme government. But this this one is the most extreme one, uh, and its uh, um, ministers, very senior ministers, and maybe I would say the most senior ministers and the most influential one are uh, uh, Bezalel Smotrich and Itamar Ben-Gvir, who openly uh, uh, support uh, what uh, Smotrich, uh, the finance minister, uh, is calling the, the victory plan. It's a little bit difficult to... to to, uh, it's a final victory plan. Uh, that's how uh, Smotrich is describing it, which means that leaving the Palestinian three options, either to accept an apartheid regime, either to be uh, um, deported uh, from Palestine, or to be uh, uh, to be uh, um, to be uh, it doesn't really say extinguished by by but saying that we should win them by the sword. So uh, these are the three options, and uh, that uh, are laid by this government, by the senior uh, uh, ministers in the government. Now, the Israeli government is very weak now, as you know, with all the demonstration inside Israel, and the pressure building from the right wing uh, on the, and it was an open pressure. It was very, it was not secret that the, the army should go to Jenin, uh, has led to this operation. But at the same time, I think that the weakness of the Israeli government was manifested also in the operation itself. Yes, Israel has uh, the Israeli army has has brought uh, destructions and killing in Jenin during these forty eight hours, but at the same time, it really didn't achieve a, a great deal. Uh, most of the armed uh, militiamen escaped. The, the camp and were not uh, uh, um, were not uh, uh, really confronted. Did not really confront the Israeli army. The Israeli army found very little lap- weapons uh, uh, compared to the weapons that we know are in the camp. And uh, I think that the weakness of the Israeli government uh, has made it that it cannot really go on with a long operation because. Uh, 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 criticism inside Israeli society, not necessarily uh, saying we are uh, uh, with the Palestinian. Of course, this is not the the, the, the issue, but maybe there could have been a criticism uh, saying you. This government does not have any, any legitimacy. That's what the protest, protesters are saying. You don't have any legitimacy to govern. Therefore, you don't have also a legitimacy to send our children to die in Jenin. So I think the Israeli army was very quick to to leave the camp because I think it also feared this kind of internal criticism within the Israeli society. That's really interesting. So let me explore this for a minute. And Yamna, again, I'd like to kind of get under this for a moment and talk about what all this might mean uh, in terms of the future. I mean, it, it clearly this is the the most extreme right wing government in the history of Israel. It also is a time when the Palestinian Authority is probably at its weakest in its in its history since the occupation began in sixty seven sixty eight. And you see these demonstrations taking place by moderate liberal left Israelis, but Palestinians not being part of it. Even Palestinian Israelis not being part of it. And you see this power of the rise of the right, though, that seems to be decimating the Supreme Court coming up with all kinds of ideas about how to disenfranchise uh, Palestinians even more and take take land. So I'm wondering where you think this is headed. I mean, this this seems to me to be one of the most critical moments that I've experienced in all of this. And I've been involved in this since I was a child, when I was a Zionist as a child in Habonim to this, in, in the early 60s to this moment now. This seems to me the most critical thing I've ever witnessed. 
So where do you think we are at this moment? And where do you think it takes it? And let me start with Bethlehem and where you sit, Yamna. Yeah, I think it, obviously it's hard to predict the future, but just going based off of you know the events that we've we've witnessed most recently, I think we are coming to things are coming to a head, and Palestinians are approaching a turning point. They are facing more Israeli violence in many ways than ever before from Israel's right-wing government, from an increasingly violent settler population in the West Bank, um, and from Israeli policies that are further entrenching an apartheid reality in the West Bank. So Palestinians now are currently under threat of more land being confiscated, the construction of of more settlements, I think more settlements um, have been more settlement units have been approved so far this year than in in all of 2022. And so Palestinians are facing threats on on every different front. And at the same time, as you mentioned, the the Palestinian Authority is in an extremely weak position. You could argue that, especially after the raid in Janine, the Palestinian Authority is perhaps the most unpopular that it has ever been. After the raid in Janine, pal- young Palestinians in the city took to the streets just hours after Israeli forces withdrew from the city. Youth took to the streets to confront the Palestinian Authority, um, yelling out things like traitors and, you know, where were you for the past two days and why didn't you protect us? And we know that today the Palestinian president, Mahmoud Abbas, actually made his first trip to Janine and the Janine refugee camp in more than 11 years. He did so under the protection of hundreds of Palestinian security forces and armored military vehicles and high-level Palestinian intelligence and security officials. So it's very indicative of the fact and that, you know, when you have to go into your own population's community under armored convoy, that means that you're not very popular and you're probably not doing a very good job of actually governing those places. And so Palestinians in Janine, I know the Palestinians that I've spoken to in Janine, they want nothing to do with the Palestinian Authority. They don't just want the Palestinian Authority to to get out of their way. I mean, they want the Palestinian Authority to to be done with altogether. And it's very telling that in the wake of the army's raid in Janine, there was a security cabinet meeting on Sunday in which Netanyahu's government announced that they were going to take measures. Obviously, the measures were, or the exact measures are unclear, but they said they were going to take measures to, quote unquote, strengthen the Palestinian Authority. And that just further solidifies the fact that Israel and the Palestinian Authority are sort of, are, are in bed together. Because when it comes to oppressing the Palestinian people or maintaining the status quo, both Israel and the Palestinian Authority, to some degree, are the ones who who serve to benefit. And so I think that what we're going to see in the future is more of what we we saw last week in Janine with Palestinians, you know, actively confronting the PA. And I think the PA is is going to have a, a reckoning sooner rather than later with Palestinians on the ground uh, who have had enough with the past 30 years of the Oslo Accords, where this interim government that was supposed to be a temporary thing is now um, 30 years in the making. Democratic elections haven't been held in 16 years. And at the same time, Palestinians are being killed at alarming at alarming rates by Israeli forces and Israeli settlers. And so Palestinians are headed to an increasingly um, abysmal reality, let's say, especially in in the West Bank and in places like Janine. And eventually things are things are going to boil over. It, it, it does feel that way and seem that way. And, and, I, and what, I want to run inside of Israel itself. I mean, the left, the people who have stood up against this seem to in many ways to have dissipated. As I talked to a friend of mine in Germany the other day who was Israeli, you know, that he said, he said in it jokingly, he said, well, I think most of the Israeli left who opposes what's happened to the Palestinians is now living in Germany. They're not even in Israel anymore. So what, how do you see that playing out itself? Any hope any, of alliance, any hope of real change? I mean, wh- where do you think it's going? 
I think you are speaking to the wrong person because you know, <laughs> I'm an optimist. Uh, good. That's good. And, uh, good. 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 <laughs> and uh, I, I, I tend to see uh, to see um, uh, spa, uh, some some kind of hope uh, all the time, and I, uh, uh, many times I, I I I'm wrong, of course. But uh, yes, I. I First of all, I don't want to exaggerate, of course, the force of uh, the Israelis that are against the occupation, but the, you know, the, 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 what we call the block against the occupation is uh, uh, is, very, is present at the demonstration. I, I'm not saying it's too big. It has some thousand people in a huge demonstration of a hundred of one hundred and fifty thousand, but they are there with the flag with the Palestinian flags. Just yesterday, you know, just a hundred meters from the headquarters of the of the Israeli army, from the chief of staff where the chief of staff has his office, a hundred meters from there, there were Palestinian flag in the demonstration. Uh, so um, this is going on. And uh, uh, and these this uh, block against the occupation is more and more accepted by the large uh, demonstrations uh, demonstrators at large. So there is a slight change, but I'm not saying that uh, this uh, this block of uh, against the occupation can really change the Israeli policy. This is really uh, going too far. But I think yes, in a very strange. Thing what Yumna described Israel and and and, and Palestine, Israel and Palestinian Israel and Palestine were our twins in a way, and when uh, Yumna described that Abu Mazen uh, uh, needs a military escort in order to reach Jenin, I don't think that Netanyahu is able today to go to Tel Aviv to an open meeting. Uh, maybe not with army, maybe not come with soldiers, but he will be kicked out if he will come to Tel Aviv today uh, to an open meeting. And this is happening all the time. So uh, the legitimacy of the Israeli uh, government is very much questioned by hundreds of thousands of Israeli, not because of the occupation. No, no, I have to be very clear there. But it is questioned, and it is in a very uh, delicate moment. And this delicate moment, as you said, could be very, very critical and very dangerous because there are these pressures by these very, very extreme right-wing ministers that are in power. And Smotrich is basically the, 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 the governor, the military governor of, of, of the West Bank. He received a lot of uh, authority. Uh, so they are pushing for a very extreme solution I would even use the final solution uh, in a way. Uh, uh, but at the same time, they are very weak inside uh, the Israeli society for reasons that apparently, apparently has nothing to do with it. But it's only apparently. Israel is in a, in a, in a dire situation because it has been addicted. Israeli was addicted to Jewish supremacy. Uh, 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 and this is why this, uh, 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 what we call judicial uh, uh, reform or judicial uh, uh, revolution or whatever we call it, this change in the uh, way the, the, uh, the relationship between the, the parliament and the, the judicial uh, branch comes because, exactly because this right-wing uh, uh, um, politician want to to implement the, their policy. They want to implement this apartheid, fully blown official apartheid regime, and they know that lame as it is, the current uh, 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 Supreme Court cannot allow them. So they have to destroy it. So everything comes together. This uh, uh, crisis inside the Israeli uh, uh, society apparently has nothing to do with, with the, the occupation, but it has everything to do with the, with, the, with the occupation and Jewish supremacy and the effort to establish a full-blown apartheid regime between the river and the sea. Yomel, what are you about and to say? Go ahead. 
Yeah, I just like to add, I mean, and this is this has definitely been said by by many Palestinians before, but you know, the the Israeli government doesn't need you know, in light of all the political turmoil inside inside um, Israel and within Israeli society, as weak as the the Israeli government may be amongst uh, Israelis or in the streets of Tel Aviv, the Israeli government doesn't need the approval of Israeli society to continue advancing its colonial plans in in the occupied Palestinian territory. And you know, we know this very well. For decades, Israel has continued with very little pushback from Israeli society as a whole, continued its settlement expansion, the killing of Palestinians, et cetera. And so, you know, even Israel may be facing extreme pushback from, you know, Israelis in Tel Aviv to, to the current judicial overhaul or reforms, whatever way you want to call it. But let's, let us not forget that the same judiciary and, and high court has been responsible for for decades and, and is continually responsible today for the ongoing dispossession and an active displacement of Palestinians. And that has never received an, an iota of the the displeasure and, and pushback from Israeli society that that we're currently seeing today when it comes to the, the judicial reform. So no matter which way you swing it, um, you know, with the current government and with all the Israeli governments previously that weren't as right wing as this one, Palestinians have always been getting screwed, basically, and have always been getting the short end of the stick um, because Israel as a government, uh, as a country, as a society is is premised on the expulsion of Palestinians. And so now with the, with the new right-wing government, we're just seeing that sort of more in our faces. And I'm just curious, but very quickly, Yumna, have you been to Janine since this happened? I have not been since this happened, but I'm actually planning a visit um, soon to go, to go speak to the Palestinians there, particularly about um, the, the recent visit by, by the Palestinian Authority. But I have spoken to... I've spoken to my contacts there since since the last raid. Once you get there and come back, we'll have another conversation. Hear what happens there. But I, I, I'm curious. You know, this this is. Um, I've been covering this for a long time, and I and I I usually Marona, as you I, I I try to be an optimist and I try to think optimistically about things and look at what could happen. But I must admit <laughs> that at this moment, it seems like with the very far right fundamentalist government inside of Israel, with the ineffectiveness of the Palestinian Authority, with what we've just seen that happened with the devastation once more of Janine, a little devastation of Janine, and with the push of this government to really talk about, literally talk about, wiping out Palestinians from their towns and taking over and building new settlements, that we're at a very critical point. And also, if you take look at this in the context of the rise of the right wing across the globe, which means very little international opposition to what Israel is doing. We're at a, on a precipice, and I'm just curious. And I know nobody's prescient. We don't know exactly what's. We can't say what's going to happen in the future. But I, is there a? Is there any hope that those in Israel who are fighting for democracy and Palestinians on the ground fighting for freedom can actually come together to build a movement to resist and stop this? Where do you think that is at this moment? Ah. Uh-huh. Here, I I want to be really very, very, very cautious. I'm also part of a movement called Two States, One Homeland, uh, that is an Israeli-Palestinian movement calling yes for two states, uh, but with the open border, freedom of movement for everyone, uh, Palestinians and Jews, uh, including uh, Palestinians, including refugees, for f- full freedom of movement in all the land uh, between the river and the sea, uh, uh, historical Palestine, mandatory Palestine. Uh, and I see uh, more, you know, people are listening. I'm talking here in Israel. Uh, people are more listening to us than before, and I see a change. But I don't want, and and uh, uh, I don't want to, you know, I have no illusions <laughs> right. that this could happen tomorrow. But yes, I I, I agree with you. Now, of course, 
the way she described it. But yes, I think that Israel such regimes, and we've seen it in Soviet Union, and we've seen it uh, in South Africa, such regimes sometimes fall out of themselves, fall, disintegrate from, disintegrate from within. Uh, this is what happened to a large extent in, in the Soviet Union and, uh, you know, the whole Warsaw Pact uh, just, uh, you know, in, in two years just uh, melted away. And the apartheid regime that was also, also in South Africa, which also seemed very, very strong, also disintegrated in a very short time. So I see here signs that Israel, the, the cohesion, of the Israeli society by which Israel was able to describe all what Yumna uh, to, to do, all what Yumna described, it was allowed by this internal Israeli, Jewish Israeli cohesion. Now this cohesion is falling apart. And we are seeing we are in new territory. Where it will lead us, I think it's a little bit, not a little bit, it's too early to say, but I think some hope is there because there are still forces in uh, the Jewish Israeli left that are opposing the occupation. There are, of course, forces in Palestinian society that wants some kind of... of, 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 of uh, of, of, of uh, and of course, and the occupation, but live in some kind of, of um, uh, 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 with with the Jews in this land. So I think yes, there is here a hope. Uh, something uh, is opening. Uh, the weaknesses. The weakness of the the PA and the Israeli government at the same time can maybe open new roads or new uh, opportunities that uh, maybe even a year ago seemed uh, very, very far away. I see them closer that now, but I also, I want to repeat again, I also see a huge danger, also potential for huge danger and huge uh, and that uh, what happened in Jenin will, will only be, you know, an introduction to, to a very uh, uh, heavy uh, um, violence by Israel against the Palestinians. This is also, it may be, it's a probability uh, that uh, we cannot ignore. And Yumna, through, through, through the lens of the Palestine editor <laughs> sitting in Bethlehem. Yeah, like, I mean, like I said before, I think that we are headed towards a crossroads what that is going to turn into um i'm not sure i mean i guess i'm a little bit less optimistic although um but but that's just judging from you know what people here tell me every single day which is that yes you know this government may collapse whether it's going to lead to a whole collapse of you know Israel as a settler colonial state. <laughs> I have no idea. But whether this government, you know, collapse, collapses, the, you know, the government that's, um, that's going to replace it isn't necessarily, and, you know, as history has, has proven, isn't necessarily going to be, to be great for Palestinians. It's kind of like putting lipstick on a pig, you know? Like, <laughs> it's just the same, the same... Um, just different iterations of the same settler colonial reality. Israeli democracy has never existed and it, it will never be achieved until Palestinians achieve liberation. And so that seems right now like a very far away reality and dream for many, though I do agree that I think, you know, other maybe smaller things are going to continue to happen before before something big happens whether that means the collapse of the current government and perhaps a total restructuring of you know israeli society as we know it or the palestinians total rejection 
of their leaders and the Oslo framework that has dicti- dictated their lives for the past 30 years um, that could perhaps pave way for, for a new reality and, and hopefully a, a brighter and more just Palestinian uh, future for Palestinians. Um, I think that would be, those would probably be welcome changes. Well, let me conclude with this. I mean, I, I think that we, we started talking, writing back and forth days ago during the beginning of the attack in Janine. And that attack, the, the assault itself is over. But the devastation is really deep in Janine at this moment. Uh, and clearly from the words of Smoljurch and, and Ben Gavir and others in the Israeli government, this may just be the beginning, this, these kind of assaults. This is the, the, and, and so it seems to me that, this, that, that if you look at what happened in Janine, and if this could just be the beginning of their dream and wish to push people out and take over completely, Janine could be a lesson for the future about what might happen. And I and I you know say so and you, and you sit inside of uh, the Palestinian world all the time, Yumna. That's where you live. Um, that's what you're part of. You know when you, when you when you look at when you look at a Jewish opinion worldwide, younger Jews around the globe are 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 backing away from Israel in larger and larger numbers. My children included. They're just saying enough. And you're seeing the same thing inside Palestine with young Palestinians and, and Palestinian activists saying enough of the PA and enough of this occupation. And, and, when, and so there can't be too many more Janines before things really explode. And that seem, this, we seem to be at just the beginning of what this new Israeli government wants to do. I want to add here, you know, history, um, as uh, the old... Uh, 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 as Marx uh, has said, you know, history sometimes repeats, when it re- repeats itself, sometimes it repeats itself as a farce. I'm not saying what happened in Janine is a farce. 12 people were killed, it's not a farce. But if you compare it to 2002, when Israel really occupied the, the Janine refugee camp, I was there yeah. two weeks after the occupation of the camp and the battle, the terrible battle that uh, that took place there. The total destruction, it was like an atomic bomb was was thrown in the middle of the, this very small refugee camp. Uh, Israel today is a, was able, despite, you know, it's more powerful than it was 20 years ago, military. The Palestinians are weaker. Uh, mit- militarily than they were 20 years ago, but the same, despite all these huge differences, huge imbalance, Israel was able only to go to the outskirts of the camp. I heard people who were there, they didn't go inside the camp, they just, you know, on the outskirts of the camp, it's a small camp, but they didn't go really in. They didn't really fight. Uh, uh, they didn't really destroy what they want, went to destroy, and they left after 48 hours. I think Israel is much stronger and much, much weaker than it was 20 years mm. ago. And what you described, again, with the Jewish, uh, the international, you know, the public opinion, the Jewish public opinion, especially in the U.S., but also elsewhere, but especially in the U.S., uh, I hear it all the time. Uh, yes, we've seen uh, uh, um, comments that we have not seen before, we've not heard before from the Biden administration. Again, with all you know, uh, the cautious uh, cautiousness of should take. But still, if if Thomas Friedman is writing today that uh, the U.S. is going to reassess its position towards Israel, this is something that we have not heard more than 20 years since the George Bush, the father, in the beginning of, uh, um, I think it was 1990, so it's more than 30 years that we have not seen this, uh, we've heard these voices. No, things are changing. Israel is much weaker. I know, I know that for a Palestinian, uh, uh, living in 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 in, in Jenin or in Bethlehem, you know, it's the same Israel. It's the same tanks. It's the same occupation. It's the same settlements. But maybe looking from within, I see the weaknesses that Israel is facing, and I see it 
maybe it's exaggerated to say collapsing from within, but really having a lot of difficulties despite its power, or maybe because of its power. Mm. Yomna, conclude this for us today anyway. I mean, I think that was a great conclusion. I don't really know <laughs> if I have much more to add. Right. I don't know. You saw me like, you know, nodding. <laughs> I saw my you head. nodding. I yes, was, yes. I think that was fantastic. Um, just responding to your initial question about like, you know, we may very well be seeing more of what we saw in Janine last week. I don't think it's an if or a may. I think it's just a matter of when. And the Israeli government has already been very clear about this, that this is just the start of um, what it views as its operation in, in Janine. And we know that Janine has already been an example over the past, you know, 20 years. Um, as Maron said, Israel conducted a much more destructive operation and invasion of the Janine refugee camp 20 years yes. ago that totally decimated the camp and left, I think, a, around a quarter of the camp's population uh, displaced once again. Um, but 20, even 20 years after that, all we've seen is, is that generation who, who witnessed the death and destruction in 2002, that generation has now grown up and is, is, is taking up arms to, to confront Israel. And so in, you know, Israel's quote unquote efforts to, um, you know, squash what it calls the cesspool of terrorism or a hotbed of terrorism. Um, in reality, we know that this is hap this has been happening for decades that Israeli, Israeli operations like the one we saw in Janine only serve to, to create a, a resurgence of of Palestinian resistance to to Israeli violence and and oppression and colonialism, and so I think that we are for sure going to see more for, for Palestinians. We are for sure going to see more raids like the ones we saw in Janine, and I don't think it will be limited to Janine. I think we're going to see it in other parts of the West Bank where we're also currently witnessing this rise in 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 armed resistance, and so I think. We're going to be seeing a lot more of the same, but even on much, much bigger scales. Well, I, I want to thank you both, um, Yuna Patel and Maron Rappaport, for both your work you do, the writing you do, and for this conversation today. And look forward to many more conversations um, as we'll stay on top of this for the real news. And this conversation today has been like a combination of not in our name and the rise of the right that I do here at the real news. Uh, and uh, we'll continue to this look because I think it's critical, not just for Israel and Palestine, but for the planet. Thank you both so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, both of you. I hope you all enjoyed our conversation today with Yonah Patel and Maron Rappaport. And we'll be linking to their articles and continuing this conversation with them about what's happening in Israel-Palestine in the future. And I want to thank you all for, again for joining us today. And please let me know what you thought about what you heard, what you'd like us to cover. Your ideas and thoughts are always important to us. Just write to me at mss at therealnews.com and I'll get right back to you. And by the way, while you're there, please go to w www.realnews.com forward slash support. Become a monthly donor. Become part of the future with us. So for David Hebden and Kelly Rivara and the crew here at The Real News, I'm Mark Steiner. Stay involved, keep listening, and take care. Thank you so much for watching The Real News Network where we lift up the voices, stories, and struggles that you care about most. And we need your help to keep doing this work. So please, tap your screen now, subscribe, and donate to The Real News Network. Solidarity forever.